Okay, uh, following on from this week's uh, aerospace design lecture where we looked at some of the factors that influence the weight or the takeoff weight uh, of an aircraft as you're designing it, or certainly ways to to estimate that in the in the concept or preliminary design stage, one of the key considerations was the impact of the briquette range equation. So I thought it'd be interesting just to do a review of how that equation is derived, because I think as as we understand how that equation gets derived, we get an insight into some of the factors that will influence some of the f key characteristics of the aircraft that we're designing. So I'm just going to go through a derivation of this equation. I know you've seen it before, um, but we're going to do it again from first principles. Um, and as I'm doing this, have a think about how these things that impact the briquette range equation um, will affect the design of the aircraft that you're working on. So, first of all, let's um, let's define the fuel consumption of our aircraft as F. So the fuel consumption obviously is the rate of change of weight of fuel with respect to time. And hopefully it's obvious that if the only thing that's affecting the weight of the aircraft is the fuel burn, then dW fuel is going to be equal to the overall change of weight of the aircraft. So if W represents the weight of aircraft of the entire aircraft, W fuel is the weight of fuel and dW fuel must be equal to dW unless you're uh, losing or gaining weight in some other way, but let's assume we're not. Let's assume that the only the only reason the aircraft's weight is changing is because fuel is burning. Then what this leads us to be able to say is that the fuel consumption F is minus dW by dt. Hopefully that's kind of obvious. Now, what about if we want to consider this derivative? The rate of change of uh, the aircraft weight with the range. Or rather the, the rate of change of the fuel we'll call this uh, WF, the rate of change of the fuel weight with range. Well, we can write this as the thing that we know, which is DWF by DT, because we've defined this above. And if we divide that by dr by dt, or the range of the aircraft with respect to time, or the distance travelled effectively by the aircraft with respect to time, and of course now we can see that dwf by dt from the definition above is simply the fuel consumption. And dr by dt, or the rate of change of distance covered by the aircraft with time, is simply the cruise speed v of the aircraft so we've got that the rate of change of the the rate of change of fuel uh, weight on board with range is simply the fuel consumption rate divided by velocity again that should kind of make sense now let's write down an expression for the range of the aircraft with respect to velocity and time again this just comes from the def basic definition of velocity and the range of the aircraft, just think of this as the distance covered by the aircraft, is simply going to be the integral between the times considered, so the distance covered between t1 and t2. The velocity of the aircraft obviously could be varying, so we have to integrate with respect to time. So the distance covered by the aircraft, the range, is the integral of v with respect to time. Now, what about if we can write this as an integral with respect to weight? So we change our dt and write it in terms of dw. Well, of course, we can do that. B 
because of this relationship up here. We know how dw varies with respect to time, so we can rewrite this integral as the integral from when the aircraft or the fuel weight is w1. So in fact, this is aircraft weight because we're going to use this expression at the top. Is w1 to w2, and then we're just going to substitute in for dt, and we get. So the uh, so the W in this expression is the full aircraft weight because we've used this expression at the top to substitute this dt here in terms of dw and this equation at the top. Uh, of course, the W is the full aircraft weight, not just the fuel weight. Um, Sometimes this expression here, which is um, v upon f, is referred to as the specific range. Now let's make the assumption uh, that the type of aircraft we're dealing with here in this case is a propeller aircraft. So we're transferring power from an engine via a shaft to a propeller. One of the things we're going to need to define is the propulsive efficiency of this system, the efficiency by which the engine can transfer its power output down the shaft through the propeller. So we'll call this the propulsive efficiency and we also need to define the fuel consumption or the specific fuel consumption in this case so the specific fuel consumption is uh, the rate of burn of fuel um, for unit power output by the engine driving the propeller. So CP, not to be confused with specific heat capacity in thermodynamics, in this context it's the specific fuel consumption. So hopefully we can see that the actual power delivered that gets converted into thrust through the propeller is going to be eta times the power output from the engine. So the actual power delivered is the multiple of the power delivered by the engine and the propulsive efficiency. And our fuel consumption, F, which we've used up in the top section there, we can simply write as CP times uh, the power of the engine, because it's the actual power the engine is delivering, not necessarily what's being transferred to the air via the shaft and the propeller that is dictating how much fuel the engine is burning. So there's an expression for fuel consumption in terms of specific uh, specific fuel consumption of the engine um, and power and a relationship with how of how that power from the engine gets transferred to the air. Now of course we can always work out power as um, force times velocity. The force delivered by um, an engine delivered by the velocity it's travelling at gives us the power output. So. Uh, in this case, the the power that is delivered to the airflow, which is P, 
is force times velocity and of course v is just the cruise velocity and we can write down what the thrust required that's delivered by the engine is because if CD over CL is our lift drag ratio and the lift is balancing the weight so if the lift and weight are balancing each other uh, then you can see that this expression here basically boils down to force times velocity which is power now then let's see if we can substitute all of these things into our range equation from above so here's up here is the equation that we had uh, expressed for the range of the aircraft and now we've got an expression for the power in terms of the velocity the weight and the lift drag coefficient um, so let's substitute everything in back into that equation at the top so we're now able to write that the range is still in terms of an integral with respect to weight is the integral from w1 to w2 of minus p lift drag ratio to divide all of this by specific fuel consumption times engine power dw and of course what we can do is just switch the limits that should have been a w switch the limits on the integral so that we're integrating from w2 to w1 and just ditch the minus sign and we'll do a little bit of tidying up as we go so we'll do P times the lift drag ratio and then we can write this all over W C P times engine power W. And of course we can tidy this up because the ratio of P, the actual power delivered, the power from the engine was eta, we defined that earlier. So this all simplifies down to eta over CP, and we can take these outside the integral because they're constant. CL over CD times the integral from W2 to W1 of 1 over W dW and of course the integral of 1 over W is going to be log W and then we place the limits in what we're going to end up with here is an expression for the range of the aircraft as being the propulsive efficiency divided by the specific fuel consumption that makes sense the more efficient the engine is the less fuel you're going to burn the further you're going to go the higher this fuel consumption it's on the bottom of the fraction so the higher the fuel consumption the, the smaller the range is going to be that makes sense we're trying to maximize the lift drag ratio to maximize the range that makes sense and then we've got the natural log of w1 over w2 and there it is the briquette range equation for a propeller driven aircraft. So hopefully just looking at that mathematical derivation of the equation gives us some insight into why these parameters, the propulsive efficiency, the specific fuel consumption, 
the ratio of the weights uh, of the aircraft at the beginning and end of the phase of flight that you're considering and the lift drag ratio of the aircraft are the key parameters that dictate the range of the aircraft. Of course we can quickly convert that into an endurance uh, equation on an equation that describes the endurance of the aircraft simply by noting that speed is distance over time. So endurance or time will be uh, let me think about this, it will be um, uh, distance which is the range divided by the cruise velocity. So all we have to do to get an endurance equation from the briquette range equation is divide through by V. So this is simply going to become eta CP V CL upon CD The challenge, of course, of understanding the physics of the endurance equation is that the velocity of the aircraft and the lift-drag ratio of the aircraft are going to be coupled. The, the lift-drag ratio achieved is going to be a function of the flight speed of the aircraft. Um, so there's a slightly added complication to understanding the impact of these parameters on the aircraft endurance. But again, understanding the physics uh, and the mathematics of the derivation of these equations hopefully will help uh, get an understanding of, of what is impacting the design of your aircraft.